Good morning. It is a Monday morning. We've got weather. If you're in Southern California, there's some rain. You see some rain falling on the eaglets who are getting huge, by the way. Hope you had a nice weekend. Um, weather we're talking about today, we're talking about that wind advisory that stays in effect. Um, we've got showers, like I said, showing up in the southern part of the state, even with some snow flurries up higher. Temperatures this week warm back into the mid and even upper 80s. We might even see a low 90 in the Central Valley. Uh, the surf forecast for sure. And we're going to look at allergies because this heat, this warm up this week, I've gotten a lot of reports of folks noticing allergies the last week or so significantly but this week is going to go ballistic we'll talk about the allergies as well the birds getting wet they don't look happy at all uh, we'll take another peek at them soon we'll go right to the weather here we've got clouds that have been filtering in and out of california over the last 24 hours here's the system here that's bringing those scattered showers to southern california right here and you see that rotation right so there's a little right there and it's and it's moving off the whole the complex itself is moving towards the west or the east pardon me but it's just back wrapping moisture and so we can see that there we also have wind as high pressure tries to build in and this low leaves and this low gets closer the pressure gradients get tighter we'll see that in the computer models as well and then in the east coast this is going to be something today for sure as a matter of fact when we look at the um the travel forecast, you're going to see an area of severe weather that includes millions of people. It's going to be a lot of people again. So they've had a busy, busy uh, couple, couple of three weeks in the nation's midsection in the Tornado Alley and part, certainly Texas. So I hope you had a good weekend. Uh, we'll get right to the weather and then we'll do fun stuff. The weather will be in chapter. So if you want to get, skip ahead to the GFS or the uh, other models you can this is the visible satellite i like this because it shows a bunch of stuff first of all it shows that north wind winds have clocked around they were crazy i got a report from somebody at ocean beach the other day um yesterday yesterday morning and he said the winds are blowing as strong as he's ever seen out there now i did have gusts up along the coast of 50 miles an hour there was a storm warning out along the coast that's not the, that we get them but not more than once, twice a year, if we're on a good year, uh, but it was windy. So I'm sure the Great Highway has a lot of sand on it right now, but you can also see how the wind has chewed up the marine layer, not allowing it to form. Sea surface temperatures are going to be cooler because of the upwelling, so fog will reform this week, most certainly. It'll try to, and it will be pretty dense. It'll be a narrower inversion because of um, the high pressure building in. Okay, snow and cloud cover so you can kind of it's a little bit of everything here so it's hard to pick out differentiate and down where the eagles are this is where they are they're in the back half so the low exists right in here it's pretty easy to see right strongest dynamics in the low or white right front quadrant so right in there okay that's what that picture tells us everybody's green mount shasta looks clear mount lassa looks clear we'll move up there and go to those regions shortly the mountains up around um heavenly valley I hope this loads up for us. Let's see if we can get it. This was a picture from Heavenly Valley earlier today. Ooh, well, we're going to do it anyway. It's got some wind on it. And I think I liked seeing the wind because I can tell you it's windy. But when you look up there at the lake and you go, oh, yeah, that's windy. So oops, let's sweep it again. So it's pretty windy. I mean, it's not howling, not as windy as yesterday, but still pressure gradients exist and subsist along um, the California coast and into the interior mountains. So it's windy. I you know, I'd say that's 20, 25 miles an hour. Uh, and I've got big wind reports off our coast as well. I've got uh, out by Point Reyes, just off of Point Reyes. We got that. Remember that the red is the gust. So out by Fairfield, um, out by kind of by, no, not even Fairfield, is it more like Napa Valley? That northeast wind just humping through there, 25 knots to, and then 36 miles an hour on the gust. So. There are 42 knots up around Red Bluff and Chico. So really, really windy today, breezy. Those winds will die off a little bit. Those are right now, by the way, that's surface observations. Um, and they, it's a plethora of information. And I will show you again. If you just go to my links page, you can get this currents observation page from National Weather Service. I'm going to go right to Sacramento. I'm going to click on it. Look at all the stuff you get. 68 degrees right now. Humidity is 24%. Wind direction not available, but the winds are gusting to 21 miles an hour. 
gives you the high low from the day before as well. So it's pretty awesome. Okay, we'll go right to the Vorticity 500 millibar chart. What we're looking for here is anything that looks like these guys, right? So anything that's, see that, that's something, that's something, that's something. The, and in between are generally the ridges, okay? I know it's oversimplification, but it's an easy way to look at this map. That's why I like this map because you can quickly, the eye can go bam. It's really good for long range prognostics. And that's what we're doing. We're going out, we're going, what's gonna happen this week? We do see the ridge right up in here. See that big loop and then the trough and then the ridge and then a trough here. Let's move through time. This is this afternoon. You see the ridge bumping in, right? Warmer, warmer, warmer. Little back wrap there, see that back wrap? Right there, that system just does not want to leave. So it actually, down towards Vegas. You see what I'm looking at here? That's interesting, this little guy. We'll see if that transpires. So that would be for tomorrow afternoon. But overall, most of us in the clear, in the clear, in the clear, warmer, 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 bridge pumps up. Little tweak comes in off San, San Diego. Looks like you get another little verticity maximum, which is the maximums would be the reds and the purples which is representing instability. That's down around San Diego on Saturday. And then what, watch what happens to everybody on Saturday night, Sunday, right there. So that's our next chance for a big change. So right now you're working outside, you're, you've got plans, you've got a wedding Saturday, right? You're fine, at least according to the long range model, you're fine. Sunday looks like the day in question. And even if you have something on Sunday, it may not be in question two days from now, right? These models will change. Um, it's something will, it'll occur some, this may be further north, it may be further south, but basic idea this week, high and dry, warmer too. So this is a close up. The black line's a good day to look at wind, represents the wind, right? So there's the wind blowing this way, wind's kind of blowing this way, wind's blowing this way, across the isobars, and they're close together, right? Close together, everything like that. See how they're just the little black lines. When they're far apart, like, this one and this one, it's breezy, but not as breezy. When they're tight, when they tighten up, that's when you get real windy. And that's what we got today. So if we look at this and cush through, ooh, tight, tight, tight. That's this afternoon. Pretty breezy up in the hills, up around Lake Tahoe. LA, you clear out that right, not LA, but the Southeast California clears out. That is this afternoon. And the wind should slacken. Yeah, still a little bit of wind on Tuesday hmm, along the coast. And then there it goes. The wind, see how the, the isobars went, opened up. So winds die down. That's the warm up. If you look closely, if you got that good an eye, you can see the dash lines increasing in height or moving up. That's warmer. That's a warmer pattern. Those are thicknesses and they're being pushed up. Then they'll start to get pushed down again on Sunday right here. See him getting pushed down. And then this is that Saturday. Well, wait a second. Hang on. 12Z. So cooler, breezy Sunday. And not a lot of moisture with this. And then it looks like Monday is the best chance for a, a sprinkle. So Sunday starts off unsettled. Transitions to maybe something on Monday. Next week. We're good. So now we're back to us today, and you'll see the temperatures warm up. It's gonna go 84 degrees today in Sonora, San Francisco. It's gonna go 75 degrees. Chico, almost 90 degrees today. It's gonna be warm. Paradise will go about 85, 84 degrees. Uh, Los Angeles, 66. Santa Barbara, 58. Almost the perfect day, but again, tree pollens, right? Tomorrow's gonna be warmer. This is the bump up tomorrow. So you're gonna see lots of upper 80s, low 90s all around the state, north to south. And I've mentioned this before, but it always bears mentioning that pollens are obviously bad this time of year, tree pollens specifically, and weeds right now. But one of the things we have working for us in the area, uh, California, and most areas that developed in the 40s and 50s are that mostly male trees were planted in Chico, in Livermore, in Mountain View, in Walnut Creek, in you know Anaheim, because the male trees don't produce fruit, and so they don't make leave stuff on the ground. You don't, you're not picking up bulbs and and uh, you know different things that are messy. And so you, now you've got a proliferation of, or probably 
male trees don't produce fruit. I said that. Female trees do. So you have less female trees, but you have almost all male trees in parts of, of California. And this time of year, the male trees do what they do. They're putting out pollen. And so the tree pollens in California, and probably throughout the rest of the country, this was sort of a thing that they figured out in the 40s and 50s, that these trees, the trees, how, you know, if you develop, these developments are actually part of the 50s too, right? The, the development, this sort of approach to how we build, and that's what happened. So you will notice the grass pollens, the weed pollens, and the trees are not letting you go. Here is the national map. This is that area. Remember we looked at it on the big satellite? There it is. That's flood warnings, our flood watches, severe thunderstorm warnings, potential for um, certainly rotating thunderstorms, funnel clouds, things like that. And then you've got some weather up here. You got up in the North Dakota region, you've got some winter storm warnings. You've got uh, weather advisories here. That's snow, and that's snow and kind of blizzardy. And then there's our wind and gale warning offshore. So it's still pretty windy. Small craft advisory for the entire California coast. And then the darker purple would be a gale warning. And it's windy, not as windy tomorrow. Wind produces waves. As we look at the forecast for, here we go into, let's see where we're from. I gotta redo that. That's the wrong model. I'm gonna take a chance here. See if I can do it. Sorry about that. I, it must, the model wasn't refreshed. Okay. All right, so here we go. This is off our coast. This is the swell forecast for today. The swell's come up pretty good. You'll see that. Um, it's short interval. See where it says 11 feet, 10 seconds right here? That's a pretty good size wave height, but the interval's pretty small. So it's gonna be kind of junky and crusty. Then the swell drops. And then when we get to, most of this week looks pretty small. So this whole week, you know, three to five feet, something like that along the coast. Not big, but not something you can just ignore. I mean, if you're fishing or what have you. This is um, Steamer Lane, tide is dropping. They're calling it three to five foot. There are some five foot sets. A little bit of south swell there. Did you see that come in? This one, these bumps, when they come in from this end, that's kind of the south. And they break, they break south swells break better, I think because they come in, like a north swell comes around the point, and then it loses energy because it has to bend, right? So it's hitting the bottom. And that's, that's what um, most of the waves, you know, this right now with less south swell are doing that. But when you get a wave that comes in over here, it's not losing any of its energy by hitting the bottom. And so you like this one, even though it's a small wave, look at it peak up, it's wedgy. You can clearly see it's from another direction. Um, and that's a good, those are good waves, typically. And that's when the big south swells come in, you get these big lumps coming from that direction. It's subtle, that's what's kind of awesome about surfing. It's a subtle thing, right? I mean, it's not, nothing really hits you over the head, except the wave, I guess. But in terms of, that's, that's, that's like, you're like, when, you, when I first started, somebody say south swell, I'd be looking on my compass, looking south, you know, out over the Sacramento Valley for the swell. And it's like, no, it's southerly swell, right? I mean, I'm kind of joking, but. This is Halama, all right, uh, and it's two to four, and it's beautiful morning, quiet, birds playing on the beach, guys, somebody's out there surfing, huh? Halama's funny, because I remember when they first, it's been around for a while, but it became very popular, and there's somebody, um, in the 70s, well, it was popular in the 60s and 70s for surfers. The only thing about Halama that's weird, it got really popular for wind surfers because the, there's a lot of wind. It'll be windy there this afternoon. You have to surf it in the morning, essentially. This is um, Trussels. Yeah, this is Trussels. Uh, they're calling it three to five. They've, that south swell keeps rolling in. San Diego loves the south. That's why they're having the Olympics here, the, the surfing in the Olympics, because um, that time of year during the Summer Olympics, that period of time, you're going to have southern hemisphere storms and energy and so it's going to get those south swells and those south swells are going to come in un, 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 um, unfe unfettered by the point you know it just comes straight in and so uh, swells la jolla will get a good swell too but this uh, trussels does real well it looks kind of slow today but you, you get the idea here is mount mclaughlin from the mount shasta plateau 
There's Mount McLaughlin there. I hope you can see it. That's one of the Cascade volcanoes. Um, if we scooch this way a little bit, I think I can scooch this way. We'll see. You should see Mount Shasta if you don't get seasick. A lot of snow. Isn't that nice? There's Black Butte, the crater. Uh, that's a cinder cone. And a lot of those little bumps are cinder cones. At one point, I thought they were Mima Mounds when I was starting out. Mima Mounds are kind of a unique landform. Um, I can't remember how they're formed. I should I should have looked into that. But Mima Mounds, I just remember from geology. But I, I think they're all just little fragments of cinder cones. Uh, Mount Shasta, got some wind at the top today. The volcanoes, pretty awesome, right? We can go to Mount Lassa now. Uh, Cascade Volcanoes, you forget, when you live in California, or if you just moved here, you're like, volcanoes? What? I mean, it's weird. Like We're under except for St. Helena, but even then it's like, people kind of forget these, we got volcanoes. It's like, it's like, uh, I don't know, it's a very different land landscape than it is when you just go on, you know, out past Yellowstone, well, even Yellowstone, because Yellowstone's a volcano, whole park's basically a volcano, but it's a caldera. These are um, stratovolcanoes, which are big, tall and majestic. Um, that is Mount Lassen from the backside. Why do we have volcanoes? This is why because the plates move, the North American plate, um, which is here, doesn't move. The Pacific plate out here, there's other plates as well, but, the, um, but these two plates kind of brush against each other and the, they, we used to call it the transcurrent fault. And what happens is it slides kind of parallel to itself, um, the plates, as they go north. But as you get further north, they start to, it got a little turn in it so it subducts the plate, the Pacific plate. So by subducting, it gets pushed under the heavier continental crust. The ocean crust is heavier, so, or pardon me, it's lighter, so it gets bent down below the continental crust. It gets down here and it starts to melt. And when it melts, it turns into the magma, hot, 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 and it comes up and it produces volcanoes. So that's why we talk about the ring of fire. That's the, sub their subduction zones where the lithosphere is being subducted under the continental crust or the oceanic crust is being subducted under the continental crust. So it's like, like that. And yeah, do you get earthquakes? Yeah, you bet you do. Do you get um, potential tsunamis? Yeah, not so much because you could, but it's the tsunamis occur more when the plates are out, like at the triple point out off Mendocino where the plates are out in the open ocean um, and they can displace a lot of water. This subducting is happening kind of a little bit inland, believe it or not. Okay. Volcanoes, fascinating. We have them, we got them, and they're active. We've got a bunch of active ones. You can see the lenticular clouds representing wind right here. This is Bliss State Park, Lake Tahoe. See the wind on the lake. Um, can't really, this picture is not uh, clicking through, but just beautiful day. And most of the activity is this way down towards Bishop. Um, and further south, down towards Big Bear, down towards the Eagles, as we saw earlier. This is the Mount Whitney portal. Uh, they've got the clouds. They've got some snow falling up there as well right now. And then this is Kayumuk. Kayum, Kay, Kayumaka. I know I'm going to get it on this one. Kayumaka Peak. Elevation 6,400 feet. And that's down towards Southern California. We can, I'll show you where it is. I think we can see it. Kind of looking towards... Let's see where we're looking towards. Kind of looking towards... Kind of down towards... Looking towards Tijuana. We're pretty high up there. Uh, this is uh, Big Bear Lake, and this is where the Eagles are getting wet. We already looked at that. Kind of bummed for them because they've had a pretty good run of nice weather, um, and right now they're suffering through what well, just does not look like fun, but God, they're majestic animals. And they must be, I'm no bird expert, and we know that, but they must be getting close. I'm looking at them. They're so intent. This guy, come on, you can tell this guy literally, I don't know if that's Gizmo or Sonny, but you just know this guy's got the game. He is so, he is just like, I'm the big brother. I came out earlier the egg. Here's how it's gonna go. If mom wasn't around, you know what I'd do? Yeah, where is mom? I'll bet, yeah. You see the down in the feathers too, which is good. So they don't, they're not, they look cold, but they're really not. They have pretty good re um, resiliency after bazillions of years of evolution. Okay, I think we talked about everything. We talked about the shower south, warmer this week. Temperatures are going to go into the mid-80s. The wind advisory stays in effect for parts of California. The winds are going to die down as we go into tomorrow, but still breezy along the coast. Um, and that covers it. Yeah, we talked about volcanoes. That was cool. We talked about allergies to male and female trees. Okay. 
I will see you back here tomorrow.